a young man once came to me he was very confused he said things are going wrong with my life and he began to wonder why things were going wrong he failed in the exam that he was sure he would come out in flying colors then and then he had a fight at home he said he was always a very good son of his parents but that evening he had a big fight with his parents and then he said he was going to his friends the next day and on the way his motorbike met with, with an accident and he fell and he broke his hand one after the other he said things were going wrong and he tried to understand the reason for that and he fixed it on his visit to a neighbor when he went there an elderly woman the grandma of that family gave him something to drink and he said most probably in that drink there was some witchcraft given to him and that occult thing is gone into his stomach that must be remaining there trying to destroy me and that's why things went wrong with me i asked him my friend why are you so afraid of the occult and the witchcraft don't you go to the church don't you receive the holy eucharist the holy eucharist entering into your body into your heart into your mind into your soul the very presence of god filling you to strengthen and to protect you when god is with you what are you afraid of the witchcraft and the occult i asked him is the devil more powerful than god himself here is a god who offers himself as your food and you are taking him in and he becomes part of your body and mind and your life and he makes you part of himself aren't you one with the lord in the holy eucharist then what are you afraid of your call for you trust in the lord and offer your life in the hands of the lord no occult can ever touch you because the almighty power of the lord is coming into you in the holy eucharist praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah i remember a young woman coming to me she said father whenever i go for an interview i fail this was a very brilliant woman and yet when she goes for an interview and sits before a board of interviewers she would become frightened nervous and she would forget everything she would begin to sweat and she would not be able to answer her mouth would go dry i asked her my sister don't you go for the holy eucharistic celebration don't you receive the body of jesus in your heart the very presence of the loving god who promises to be with us all the time what is it that makes you afraid if god is with you if god is within you if god is become part and parcel of your life why are you afraid of anyone asking any question to you i told her what is important 
is to renew your faith in the great love of the Holy Eucharist, God offering Himself to you as your, as your food, becoming part of you. Let the faith in the Holy Eucharist strengthen you all the time. You claim it. You claim that protection, that presence of God. Let the presence of God that comes to you in the Holy Eucharist become a tangible experience for you. Today, my dear sisters and brothers, the Lord is inviting us to put our trust in the love manifested to us in the Holy Eucharist. From the time God called Abraham, that man from Ur, from Mesopotamia, Abraham, from that time God has been telling us, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Almost at every page of the Bible we find this promise, I am with you, to strengthen you, God said it to, to Moses, to Joshua, to Jeremiah, to Mother Mary, everyone God chose, God gave the promise, I am with you, don't be afraid. And this promise is fulfilled in a great way, in the Holy Eucharist. The presence of God, the power of God, the love of God flowing into us and filling us in a very real and tangible way in the form of bread to support us, to strengthen us in our earthly life. In the Gospel we have the beautiful description by St. Luke how Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist in the last Passover meal that Jesus ate with his disciples. Jesus took a piece of bread and said, take it and eat it. This is my body to be broken for you. And then he took a cup of wine and gave it to them and said, take it and drink it. This is my blood to be shed for you. And thus, in the form of bread and wine, Jesus gave us his own body to eat and his own blood to drink that we may live forever. And after having done this, Jesus said something very significant to reveal to us the whole meaning of the whole Eucharist. Jesus said, do this in memory of me. That verse reveals to us the whole meaning and significance of the mystery of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus gives us his body telling us this is my body to be broken for you and this is my blood to be shed for you and then Jesus is telling us do this in memory of me. Whenever you come together in my name do this in memory of me. That is what we do here. That is what we do when we come to the Holy Eucharistic celebration. We are remembering. And what are we remembering at this altar? At this altar, we remember how our God was broken for us. How our God was betrayed for us. How our God was condemned and crucified and buried for us. That is what we remember. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, it's not enough to say broken for us because when we say it in the plural, it sounds a little impersonal. Anything said in the plural refers to a crowd broken for us, us, the whole world. Am I involved? Is he broken for me? And that's why St. Paul puts it in personal singular. Galatians, Galatians 2.20. St. Paul says, It is for me that my God was broken. It is for me that my God was betrayed. It is for me that my God was condemned. And that is what we remember. For me, my God was broken. 
my God was betrayed, my God was condemned for me. And that is what we remember. And that remembrance is a celebration. We call it Eucharistic celebration. How can the memory of being broken for me be a celebration? Wasn't the death of Jesus on Mount Calvary, wasn't it a brutal murder? And what is there to celebrate in that brutal murder committed in cold blood? What is it to, to celebrate in it? No, my dear sisters and brothers, we celebrate that event of, of Mount Calvary because what happened on Mount Calvary was not really a brutal murder, but the self-offering of a God for our salvation. And that's why Jesus said, No one snatches my life away from me. I am willingly offering my life for your salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one snatches my life away from me. I am willingly offering myself for your salvation, for your eternal life. So, what happened on Calvary was a willing, loving offering of our God, self-offering of our God, that we may have life, and life in the full. And therefore, Mount Calvary is the greatest symbol of love. God loved me so much that He offered himself to be betrayed, to be condemned, to be crucified for me. That is the greatest act of love. You know, there are many ways to show our love to our friends. One way is a handshake. I reach my hand out to you to tell you I care for you. We feel that love in our hearts. But then there's a greater way to show my love. I come to know that my friend is in trouble, something went wrong. I went to him, I sit with him, I talk to him, I listen to him, I comfort him. That's a greater way to show my love. But then, there is a still greater way to show my love. I understand that my friend has a financial problem. I gather whatever money I could. I go and give it to him and I tell him, my friend, I know you are in trouble. This is all what I could get. Take it. This is for you. <clears throat> Give it back to me only when you can. Use it as best as you could. That's a greater way to show my love to my friend. When we think in such terms, we could ask a question, what is the greatest manifestation of love? Jesus said, greater love has no one than offering one's life for one's friend. That's what Jesus did. My life is all that I have. I offer it. I'm not offering a little money, a little love, a little comfort, a little time. I'm offering my life, all that I have for my friend. That's the greatest offering of love. That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. When I look at the cross on Mount Calvary, I understand how much I am loved. I am so loved that my God offered himself for my salvation. I am so precious. I am so dear. I am so dear. I am so great. How great am I? How precious am I? I am so precious that my God thought he should offer his life for my salvation. I'm so precious to my God, I'm so dear to my God, that God decided that I should not perish, that I should not die in my sin. Rather, he thought he should die, that I may live forever. But dear brothers and sisters, it is when we stand at this altar that we realize how great how valuable, how loved, how dear we are to our God. That is what we remember at this altar. Every time we come to this altar, that experience, 
that experience of love is a healing experience because there are many moments in our life when we feel so small so sad so angry and this is happening to us all the time we are offended we are hurt with all these hurt feelings we come to this altar we come to this altar and that's when we realize how much we are loved by our god that's when we realize how precious how dear how great we are and all our hurt feelings vanish all our sadness vanishes all our temptations vanish all our anger vanishes in that explosion of love that we receive at this altar and that's why i would love to say the holy eucharistic celebration is the greatest and most effective healing service in that experience of love offered to us at this altar my dear brothers and sisters before jesus sat at table with his disciples jesus said a sentence to them jesus said i have desired with a great desire to eat this passover meal with you and that's what jesus is telling every one of us when we come to this altar my child i have been waiting for you i have been waiting for you i have been desiring with a great desire to feed you with my love because i know how hurt you are i know how sad you are i know how offended you are i know how low you feel today because of the many things that went wrong with your life today here i am i have been waiting for you you know my dear friends jesus knows everything happening to us matthew 10:30 even our hair even a hair falling down from our head is all counted by him what does that mean in a beautiful way the lord is revealing to us how caring he is a drop of tears that stream down from our eyes is all collected in the hands of the lord psalm 568 psalm 568 i have counted your afflictions i have collected your tears in my heart my god knows every time i am hurt i am offended i failed i committed a sin i lost anything in life even a hair falling down from our head such a silly detail every such detail of our sufferings of our problems of our troubles of our temptations of our sins is known by the lord he wants to comfort us he wants to console us he wants to strengthen us he wants to fill us with his love the lord is telling us my child i have been waiting for you i know how sad you are come come i will comfort you an invitation you and i need to listen to when we come to this altar and we need to offer we need to offer to him offer to him everything sick and sad and sinful in our lives and that's why there is a beautiful moment in the holy eucharistic celebration the moment of offertory the moment the priest takes a piece of bread and keeps it on the paten and lifts it up like this for all of us to see and then the priest pours a little wine into the chalice adds a drop of water once again lifts it up on the altar a moment the lord is telling us my children i am offering myself to my heavenly father have you anything to offer i am offering my broken body to my heavenly father is your body broken is your body aching is your body ailing is your body swollen up all the pain of your body give it all to me let me raise up the brokenness of your body with my broken body to my heavenly father a moment jesus is waiting to accept 
all the problems and trials and troubles of our life 600 years before the coming of Jesus God sent prophet Isaiah to reveal to us all about the savior the prophet said the savior is coming when the savior comes he will take upon himself our sin our pain and our sickness that's what Jesus did on the cross on the cross he took upon himself our sin and our pain and our sickness and that is what Jesus is waiting to do every time the holy sacrifice is offered he's waiting to take upon himself everything sick and sad and sinful in our lives we need to offer we need to offer everything and you know what everything offered in the hands of Jesus is accepted in the heart of the Lord everything offered in the heart of the Lord is anointed with the Holy Spirit that is what happens at the moment of consecration at the moment of consecration Jesus takes that piece of bread but Jesus takes that piece of bread in the hands of the priest and Jesus speaks but Jesus speaks in the voice of the priest you know why the priest at the altar is a visible symbol of the invisible presence of our high priest and Jesus is present in in the priest offering the sacrifice and we all join him all of us we are a priestly nation as St Peter tells us first letter of Peter chapter 2 verse 9 we are a priestly people our people set apart and precisely because we come together around this altar around our high priest and we offer ourselves everything offered is accepted anointed and transformed that is what happens at the moment of consecration jesus says this is my body this is my blood what happens what god says truly happens the word of god comes true remember at the beginning of the world the lord god said let there be light and the thickest of darkness was dispelled from the face of the earth jesus said lazarus come out and the dead man came out alive jesus said be calm and the raging sea and the roaring waves fell at the feet of jesus the word of god comes true in the power and anointing of the holy spirit the same god at the altar says this is my body this is my blood in the anointing of the holy spirit the bread becomes the body of jesus the wine becomes the blood of jesus in theology that's a big word for this transubstantiation big word but easy to understand the substance changes it was bread it is not bread anymore looks like bread round in shape white in color light in weight but beyond the size of the shape and the color the bread is become the body of jesus the wine is become the blood of jesus transubstantiation my dear friends now let me come to my point and my point is this does this change occur only to the bread and the wine this transubstantiation does it occur only to the bread and wine if a change occurs only on the altar and all of us sitting there we are spectators we are just on lookers then the holy eucharist would be a mere ritual mere ritual no it is a sacrament all of us are caught up in that powerful wave of change depends what he offered with that piece of bread with that wine did he offer your sadness 
to sadness in your mind. Jesus accepts that sadness with a piece of bread. And that sadness enters into the heart of Jesus. In the heart of Jesus, your sadness is anointed with the Holy Spirit and your sadness changes substance. When sadness changes substance, what does it become? It becomes joy. Your hurt feeling, you are very hurt by whatever happened and you are angry. That anger you offered, you offered on the altar with a piece of bread. Jesus takes that anger into his heart. In the heart of Jesus, your anger is anointed with the Holy Spirit. Your anger changes substance. Your anger changes substance. When anger changes substance, what does it become? It becomes love. You offered your hot temper. You understand that you are a hot tempered person. You know, some people are like that. Anger is hanging down the nose. It easily slips into the mouth and the things that we scream at people. Hot temper, very bad. I understand I'm a very hot tempered person. I offer that hot temper with that piece of bread. Jesus accepts your hot temper into his heart. In the heart of Jesus, your hot temper is anointed with the Holy Spirit. The hot temper changes substance, changes substance. And what does it become? It becomes the power of gentleness. The power of gentleness. You offer your pain, your sickness, your sickness accepted in the heart of Jesus, anointed with the Holy Spirit, changes substance. It becomes healing. It becomes healing. There is a process of transubstantiation going on every time we come for the Holy Mass. No, my dear friends, it's like throwing anything in the fire. Whatever you throw in the fire becomes what? A flame of fire. Throw a piece of paper, it goes up in flame. You throw a piece of iron, it blazes a flame. Everything thrown in the fire becomes a flame of fire. There is fire on this altar. The fire of the Holy Spirit, everything thrown into the altar, into the hands of the Lord, all goes up in flame, changed totally, transformed. 